A lot of people don't understand what is happening now and why it is that I remain concerned in the context of the pandemic. Many people tell you that COVID is over. It's barely causing any symptoms, and so therefore there is no need to worry. For anyone who has been listening to me, you should realize by now that very rarely is what you see really what is going on. And just because someone reassures you doesn't mean that this is not anything to be concerned about. Now, in the principle of risk mitigation, it doesn't mean that something absolutely is going to happen. But if you don't consider the possibility, you're in trouble. What I'm going to share today now is to do with information from the European Center of Disease Prevention and Control, looking at the epidemiological situation and preparedness for candidozyma, a candida auris um, fungus in 2024. And so this was only put out on the 11th of September 2025. So you know this is quite recent. And they're talking about it because it has a serious implication for health. But it's not just that that I'm looking at it about. I am looking at this to highlight to you what I think is happening and what is going to happen in the context of population level immunity. Before I start, I just want to mention that at the moment we have one of the most incredible newsletters which we've been working at for over a year. And in it will be this, one of the articles here will be included in our recent um, update, but it has the most beautiful images, the stories, a lot of what I've been talking about is held in here in the form of articles. And this is something that I think is going to be extremely important for people to understand and reflect on in an article form. So if you're interested, the link is in the description below. Let's get back to this fungal infection. Now, part of the reason why I'm focused on it is because I predicted that with rounds of COVID infections in the population, you then end up with immune suppression broadly because every infection damages the immune system. This is a very important point that very few people realize. Just because the symptoms are mild doesn't mean it's damaging, it's not damaging the immune system. And although it is not very clearly, it is not HIV. In the same way that HIV can have a very mild infection or mild symptoms at the beginning, but cause severe damage to the immune system, this is how I liken what can happen with ongoing persistent replication of COVID in regions where people no longer seem to have the immunity to control the infection. The reason it's important is because the worse the population level of immunity, the more likely we are going to see breakthroughs of unusual infections that we don't normally see. This is what I'm going to show you here. And again, these things don't get the headlines because that's not what people want to focus on. I'm just telling you what's happening and why this is such a serious issue as we move forward. Let's look back at this. So they have been monitoring this fungus. And just so that you're aware, uh, a fungus is not a bacteria. It's bigger than a bacteria, but it has its own cell wall. It replicates. Yeast that you use in baking is a fungus. And it helps, in most instances, it works along with our health and our body to digest and break down organic material. But, if it invades parts of the body that it shouldn't, gets in the bloodstream or starts infecting the lungs or something like that, then it can cause very severe disease and it can kill you. And I suspect, based on this article, that this trend is only going to increase. So let's look at it. So Candida auris was the old name. They have now called it Candidozyma. And it poses a big risk for patients in healthcare facilities across Europe because it can cause severe infections in people who are critically ill. Additionally, 
It has resistance to several antifungal agents, which makes it very difficult to treat. And so it then will spread in healthcare facilities and cause severe infections, antifungals don't work, and people don't die. Uh, people die. Now, this is where the numbers get very, very important. Look at this. So, in total, 4,012 cases of Candida auris colonization or infection were reported by the European Union in countries between 2013 to 2023. 10 years, 4,000 cases. Okay, not all of them died, but it has a very high mortality. You're talking about 30 to 60 percent mortality in this group. Now, 4,000 is a good amount, puts pressure on health systems. But here is the bit that you may have overlooked, and I'm emphasizing this. So remember, between 2013 to 2023, there were 4,000 cases over the period of 10 years. And if you averaged it out, that could be about 400 cases a year. But here is where it gets very, very interesting. Look at this. I'm not making this up. Since 2020, case numbers have been rapidly increasing until 2023. So in 2023, there were 1,346 cases. Now remember, 4,000 over 10 years. In 2023, 1,346 cases. This, despite this increase, the recorded case numbers only reflect the tip of the iceberg as systematic surveillance is not in place for many countries. All I can tell you is that just think about those numbers. In 2023, 1,346 cases. And over 10 years, it was 4,000 in total. That is, to me, a perfect example. of what is happening. I bet, I bet you in 2024, that number is maintained or increased. This is the serious situation we are looking at. And this is what I mean. Population immunity has been damaged. People are getting sick. More people will get sick. Sadly, I don't know if there is a lot that we can do. You personally, can protect your immunity. But if we continue to ignore this and we continue to leave this, no doubt we are going to have rising mortality as we have been seeing over the past four to five years, even though this has been denied, we are going to be seeing huge problems in years to come. One of the problems that people get caught out by is that people don't, the people only seem to respond when people die quickly. That's why everybody got afraid in COVID. Oh my goodness, we had how many deaths today of severe COVID and people got afraid. Just think about something. If you found out that the mortality daily was about the same or maybe a little higher than in 2020, but they were just dying of different things that were not as exciting in terms of intensive care, would you be bothered? That is the point. People are only responding to frightening news. But well, let me warn you, when this becomes frightening, when you start to hear about it, by then, sadly, it will be too late because this is already a very, very serious situation. Final reminder, look in the description below. Join us in this newsletter. It's free, beautiful imagery, working in collaboration with Lumientia. We really would like your support. Join us. Let's make this one of the best newsletters in the world. We think it already is, and we would definitely like your support.
Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.